Hi, I'm Allison Smith, the senior class president. I'm Lindsay Kelly, and I'm the president of SAD. Unfortunately, drug and alcohol abuse has become more and more of a problem in the youth community today. Many people are not aware of the consequences that come with using drugs. As a community, we need to realize this problem, stop sitting on the sidelines, and take a stand. We felt it was important to do our part to inform the community and the youth about this huge issue. But more importantly, to let children and teenagers know that you don't need drugs or alcohol to change who you are. Being you is good enough. What's the most challenging part of your job? Without question, the challenge, most challenging part of my job, I would, I would say something different many years ago, but, but today I would definitely say that uh, the most challenging aspect of the job is, is the current state of the opiate addiction in the town of Howich. Um, 20 years ago, I've been doing drug investigations for 20 years now, uh, and over the past 20 years, I've seen many drug issues, um, many instances of drug abuse, but nothing. Uh, like we see now with drug addiction, drug addiction uh, and the way that it's tearing at the fabric of our community. Um, it's, really, it's really spread into uh, damaging households and families in our community. And uh, there's a lot that needs to be done in order to address that. 80 to 90 percent of our crime in the town of Howich is directly drug related, whether it's uh, from uh, disputes over drug drug funds, money spent on drugs, money o money's owed on drugs, uh, whether it's for uh, stealing uh, in order to sell or to trade items in order to support their habit. Um, you know, drug, drug abuse is not a victimless crime. Uh, everybody that is uh, victimized from theft, uh, assaults, they're all victims, and they're all victims of, of drug abuse. Um, the Howitch Police Department now, in the town of Howitch, we have more uh, people that die from drug overdoses, particularly opiate overdoses, in the past couple of years than we have from motor vehicle accidents. Uh, the Howitch Police Department responds to more, uh, if not an equal amount, of drug overdoses than we do um, heart attacks. Why did you join law enforcement? When I was growing up, I had a, uh, I had a respect uh, for police officers uh, from a young age. When I got to be in my teenage years, um, I had very positive uh, interactions with, with police officers. I saw them as good role models. I was lucky enough to, uh, to, to have a lot of contact with good police officers. And I saw the role models, the way that they were role models in the community. I saw the way that they could help in the community. I see the impact that they make uh, in the community. Uh, it's a perfect way um, that I found that uh, you could give back to the community uh, and do your best to make the community safe, um, you know, for our families and our loved ones to live in. What is your advice to teenagers who are abusing drugs now? Well, I would say that, you know, many, many teens get into drug abuse and start abusing drugs. Uh, to try to cover up their problems or to try to hide from their problems. And I just want to say that nobody needs to do drugs. Uh, you don't need to do drugs to get rid of your problems. Learn to face your problems. Um, face your problems. Uh, turning to drugs to deal with your problems or mask your problems is just going to create more problems. Uh, many teens turn to drug use uh, to try to become somebody that they're not, uh, to try to escape from who they really are. My advice is to recognize who you are, accept who you are. If you learn to accept who you are, others are going to learn to accept who you are as well. Drug use can and will lead to uh, a lifetime of problems. Uh, you're going to risk losing your friends. You're going to risk losing your family. You're going to risk uh, health, long-term health issues. Uh, and in the event that you run into legal issues, you're going you're to prevent problems that are going to follow you the rest of your life. Um, recognize who you are. Be above it, be strong, and just be you. How has drugs and alcohol affected your life? Um, my daughter, Elizabeth, um, started experimenting with drugs when she was in high school. 
um, unbeknownst to me for two years, um, I didn't realize it. And before I knew it, she was, um, she was shooting heroin. And I found out about it from a friend of hers. And uh, at that point, she was a senior in high school. She had been using for a couple years. Um, it, it was terrible. I had her um, arrested um, and put into a drug rehab. <clears throat> Um, she struggled with it for years. Um, she was in and out of rehab and programs for the next five or six years. And at a very young age of 23, she, she died of an overdose. Um, it affects the entire family. Um, Liz changed friends. Um, I didn't really understand addiction at the time, so I didn't know what the signs were. Her, her friends changed, like I said. She, she, she wasn't communicating with her family. She wouldn't talk to me. So a lot of things changed. And as I look back, I realized that um, they were signs of, of drug abuse. But again, at the time, um, I didn't know anything about addiction. I didn't know that prescription drugs could lead to um, heroin and then a subsequent overdose. Um, I, was, I was an ignorant parent. Um, her friends, one of her friends told me when she was a senior, um, I wished it was sooner. I think that if you have friends who are in the midst of doing drugs and you see changes with them, that don't be afraid to talk to their parents or talk to them uh, to get them some help. It's real important to get help at an early age before this, this sets in. Because you might think that you're experimenting with drugs. Um, you don't realize how addictive they are. You're really playing Russian roulette because you could be the type of personality that you get addicted quickly. And then one thing leads to another and you're way over your head. And and it's very hard to control. It will change your life forever. Drugs control you. Drugs will control you. You will have no longer any control over your life. So if you have a friend who is using, um, talk to them. Don't be afraid to talk to their parents. Don't be afraid to go to a guidance counselor to, to, to reach out for some help because there is help out there. And, and it's really important to get that help very soon, before it's too late. What advice would you give to students who are struggling with drugs and alcohol today? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, what advice? Don't do it. Never start. My daughter said to me, Mom, I wish I had never taken that pill, that first pill, because she loved it. She became addicted very quickly. So my advice would be just don't do it because it's, it's like I said, it's playing Russian roulette with your life and your life will change forever. What made you start using and what made you start dealing afterward? What made me start using just boredom of Cape Cod and everything when I was younger. So I started smoking weed and then, I don't know, I was like 10 years old and couldn't afford weed, so I started selling it. And then from there, just went up to, through the ladder of drugs. What was your gateway drug? Probably, truthfully, probably Ritalin that they prescribed me to when I was a kid. And then weed. In what ways would your life be different if you never started? I'd have a lot of money, I'd, a lot of different things, like I'd still have a license. Um, I'm fully a C mechanic and I'd actually be able to work at a dealership or something. Like I screwed myself up pretty good with drugs, like I wasted 10 years of my life. What was the biggest sacrifice you've had to make to live that lifestyle? I always have to be moving back into my mother's house because I
point or whatever, and um, more or less just living life. I'd have to run and chase the high every day, and not a way to live life. Um, in Harwich, we deal a lot with teens, families, young adults. We see a lot of alcohol and drugs and the related problems that stem from them from the fire department perspective. I would say that alcohol is probably the most frequent thing that we deal with with teens and it often affects their poor choices. We respond to motor vehicle accidents and different types of incidents that usually involve alcohol. It seems that at some point in time the alcohol can escalate or it causes them to try other things when they're under the influence of alcohol, including marijuana. We see a lot of prescription drug abuse, and then that seems to escalate into heroin, which has become a bigger problem in our community. It's cheap and easy to get and gives people that quick high, and they seem to need it more and more. The, the heroin that we see, it, can be taken many ways. It's an opiate. It is a downer, so they get a quick high and then they crash. They get very sleepy. They stop breathing. Their breathing slows. Their blood pressure drops and lots of times they will stop breathing altogether. So I think it's really important for anyone who thinks that there's a medical emergency to call for an ambulance, call 911 and let us come out and deal with that. When we do respond to these scenes, if it is something that is involving the person's unresponsive or they're not breathing, we do have lots of tools that can help them. We can breathe for them. And if it is an opiate overdose, we have a drug called Narcan that we can administer that will reverse the effects of the heroin and enable that person to start breathing again. The issue that we run into sometimes is the delay and when people don't call for an ambulance and the person's unresponsive, if they do stop breathing, brain damage can occur within minutes. So it's really important to make that phone call and get us there as quick as we can so that we can do what we need to do to save them. I think the most important part to emphasize here is that it's important to call if you're in a situation where you believe someone has overdosed or taken too much of a prescription drug or anything. There is a new law in Massachusetts. It's newer, it's not brand new, but a lot of people don't know about it. It's called the 911 Good Samaritan Law, and it does prevent people on the scene from getting in trouble with law enforcement, being prosecuted for illegal substances that are found on the scene if there is a medical emergency. So it's, it's they feel safer calling 911 knowing that they're not gonna get in trouble and then that person will still get the medical help they need. Clark, I've been with the Harwich Police Department for over 14 years. Uh, I'm the school resource officer here Harwich High School. Um, myself and members of the Harwich Police Department, we recognize and acknowledge the drug epidemic that we currently face on Cape Cod. And in fact, a very alarming and concerning statistics that I just saw the other day, actually, Massachusetts ranks first in the country for heroin-related overdoses. Uh, this, this drug problem, it, it really resonates with me. It, it personally affects me. I've actually had members of my family affected by this, and I've actually lost some friends to substance abuse and addiction, so it's something that I feel strongly about. As a police department and the high school staff, we are deeply concerned with the drug problem and how it affects our youth, in particular our students. Um, as a department, we remain committed to supporting all initiatives aimed at raising awareness to substance abuse and the issues within our community. And just to, to illustrate a few of these examples of our commitment, uh, recently we had guest speaker Chris Herron, who is the founder of Project Purple, 
and he actually is a Fall River native and a former basketball player. He told his story of drug addiction and wasted potential and his message to the kids, learn from my mistakes, don't follow in my footsteps. And also, in conjunction with the help of Barnesville County Sheriff's Canine Unit, we've had them here several times this year, just in an effort to maintain a drug-free, safe learning environment for our students. You know, I think a few hurdles and obstacles we face with battling this drug problem, how accessible the drugs are and how inexpensive they are. So the fact that kids can get their hands on these things so easily and actually afford them, I think that's a real problem. Okay. Personally feel education and early intervention is key. Um, I frequently visit the classrooms at the high school to speak about the dangers of drug abuse. I worked the road on patrol for about 12 years uh, before becoming the school resource officer and I responded to countless overdoses which involved kids and, and it's a scary thing because drugs, they don't discriminate. They don't care how old you are, how young you are, how rich or poor you are they're an equal opportunity killer. I, th I think a good sign that we're heading in the right direction with this drug problem. Uh, just this past week, Governor Patrick declared a public health emergency with regards to the opiate epidemic, promising $20 million to invest into drug intervention, treatment, and recovery programs. Also plans to authorize law enforcement to administer and carry Narcan, the overdose reversal drug. The scariest thing to me in my mind, and particularly with the opiates, uh, kids, it, it just takes one time. You'll be at a party and you can't resist that temptation. You, you take one pill and before you know it, without any intention, you're addicted. And I've seen kids steal from family members just to support that next high. So I want to thank you guys for taking the time to make this video and bring awareness and education to your peers. And I, I think you're making a real difference. So thank you. Uh, actually, if Lily comes into the school and um, utilizes her services and she indicates through a backpack, a book bag, or a jacket, um, the results are it's an order response and final response, which is sitting and no touching. The school resource officer comes in along with the principal, vice principal, um, and they will go to, through that object. And if they find something um, of importance, meaning narcotic wise, um, they note that they take the item with them when they actually bring the student to the office, call the parents, parents get notified, and then the school will take actions as well as the, uh, the police department. It takes one school, one pledge, one promise, be you. You don't need. You don't need. You don't need drugs and alcohol to change who you are. You are perfect. Just the way you are. Break the silence. And educate others. And educate others. And educate others because we are. We are. We are good enough without it. Big or small. Big or small. Big or small, anyone can make a difference. It just takes one. 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 <laughs> Being me. Being me. Being me is enough. Never realize how strong you are. How strong you are. How strong you are. Until being strong is the only choice you have. Rise above. Be true to yourself. And be true to yourself. Be above the influence. And make a difference. And make a difference. And make a difference to those surrounding you. Be the real hero. Be the real hero. You're lucky enough to be different. To be different. To be different. Never change.